ask him if he thinks you've been doing well, if you are doing the best in stats or whatever. He said, he said yes to both of those things. Then I told her if he says yes to the, both of those things, then I think the next best thing to say to him is, okay, well, based on that, if you believe that, because I thought that, I wasn't sure until you told me, but if you say that is how it is, then I remember we had a conversation and you said X, Y, Z. And so my question to you is, is there some other reason? Has something changed? Because I feel like I'm giving everything and I'd like to make sure that what you're looking for is what I'm focused on. Can I add something? Thank you. Um, two things. One is like, if you play or if you don't play is, is out of your control. If you, if you think or not. So, um, you will not write down the rotations, but you, of course, with like everything you do and everything what's in your control, you have a, like a huge influence to that. And, um, so communication is also one one of those like next to like actions and next to um every, like how you how you handle your emotions and also like like everything that that's in your control going to contribute to like to the result in the end of like playing but then about communication i think it's really um really helpful if you don't put any interpretations or judgments or anything into, into your words, just like start with some perception. So I noticed um, I didn't play for three games or anything because everything that's like, um, like coaches are easily attacked. Um, and it doesn't like, it's not, it doesn't change anything if you attack them like with your fists or with your words. So like the brain is, is like doing the same thing. It's like, it's reacting. So it's like, um, he gonna try to find like, like fight back or like not gonna say anything that's gonna help you. So, and then like, when you, when you said, okay, this is like what I perceive. And for me, it feels like, like what, how do you feel? Not like how his actions feel, but how do you, how do you, feel so you show them a little part of yourself so you make yourself a little bit vulnerable add something i want to add the agent perspective because <laughs> i was thinking from a, a player perspective i think that most players ask that question to the the coaches way too early i feel like most players don't understand how hard you have to work and how much you have to earn the respect of everyone around you, but also to basically like earn that trust with yourself that you have come in day in and day out and done what's necessary without complaining or being caught up in the worries of not starting or, you know, whatever, or not performing well. And I would say, talk to your agents also before you want to have that talk with your coaches. So A, we know, because we might know, like Barrett said, they have a lot going on, you know? So if you bring it up at the wrong time or you bring it up when the team is losing or whatever, it could cause irreparable damage. So one of the things is definitely talk to us and then know, give yourself like a time frame. Okay, my first four months with the team, I should definitely focus on just being the best I can and see where I get and then reassess. But if you are one of the best players or one of the best six players on the court during training, you will find your way on that damn court during a match, one way or another, from an agent perspective, because teammates, captains, presidents, managers, other coaches, somebody is gonna see that you're doing well and then question that coach and go, what are you doing? Or the coach is gonna feel that pressure themselves because they go, well, I have no other option but to put this player in because I was trying to be political and play the, the president's daughter or wife or something like that. There's so many different crazy things that are going on. So definitely check with us first, but definitely also give yourself a half season of just hard ass work. Yeah, people know that I have struggled with those things my entire career. You know, even though 
I basically reached the somewhat the top level. I don't like saying top level, but I played the world championship. I played the European you championship. Did. I'll say it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, he's my lawyer. <laughs> and uh, but I, I I basically always struggled with uh, having to prove myself to everybody again and again, especially after doing something right, you know, do, playing well, winning something. I always felt this kind of a pressure that I still have to prove myself again and again, which is not a bad thing as a base, because it means that you're humble enough, if I may say so for myself, that I don't think that I am like the best in the world and I don't go um, too much, you know, thinking because in, in the moment that you think that you are the best and you, that you know everything, you're, you're done. You're basically done. You have nowhere else to go but down. The interpersonal side of, of what you do will always come back on everybody in your social network. So those that are closest to you are going to be mega impacted by your growth. So bettering yourself, having external experiences is only teaching you how to be a better you and how to deal with other people. But it's also giving you perspective, right? perspective away from your immediate circle of friends. So there's three things that I wanted to say when I was thinking about all of this. It's perspective, growth, and flexibility. And the perspective part is like, say you're with a, another family like Nico was talking about, or say you're not even with a family and you have to video call with everybody back home. You might be video calling with tons of people, that might be cool, or just your family. But the thing is, is you have a chance to understand and listen to yourself, be aware of where am I weak that I could build up? Because if I'm weak in an area where I feel like I need them because of some areas that I know I, I should grow, then okay. But if I'm weak just because I love them and I miss them, I have to accept that. That's okay, that's good. That's a sign that it, that's positive, right? The last thing, flexibility is, I heard something on a podcast two days ago and they were talking about uh, control. And one, one question came back, but what about the things that you can't control? If you're trying to control everything, if you're a type A personality, which most people are in on some level, and the answer was like, well, you have to also control the uncontrollables. And the way you do that is by being aware, this is out of my control. So I have to learn how to accept that thing, take what I can from it, a bad coach, not being able to go home for Christmas, all this stuff. And then that is bettering me at the end of the day so that when I go home to these people, I am better. So I really like short, um, short add on because like knowing that there are things you can't control um, can be really frustrating because you think, okay, fuck, but it can be also really relieving. It can be okay. If I can't control that, why the shit should I worry about that? Like, I will do everything that I can and like in my range, but the rest, okay, let it go. Like, and this is the practice, like Ryan said. All time lying to ourselves when we are speaking with ourselves, you know, we're telling ourselves stuff, you know, and uh, basically we're always lying to ourselves. And why shouldn't we tell ourselves better lies instead of saying, uh, oh, I didn't do this well. Uh, I, I, was, I was the worst thing. Why not say to yourself, I'm really good. I'm gonna, this is gonna be like the best game ever. This is gonna be like the best practice ever. This is gonna be, why not? You know? you know. Um, can I share also an achievement of mine? <laughs> because um, um, I, fi I finished that online course because usually I was doing it without, um, without videos. So I was just meeting people and now I made Nika trying it out and it seems like it works pretty well. <laughs> and, um, so I wanted to take it one step further um, to see if I, if like I can have a small group of of player like three to five something like that not more than five um, who get the videos and then have like one consultation a week. So not not one by one, but in this small group of five where we speak about the content of the course, um, which is mostly like it is a lot of mindfulness skills. Um, and we'll teach you like how to handle your emotions and your, your thoughts better, basically. And I put together 
um, everything that I think for my career like was really helpful, but also like I worked with athletes from other sports, from soccer or handball and um, like also like BMX a little bit. So, <laughs> um, so what I learned from them and what worked for them and I put that together in this one course, um, which is eight weeks long. And yeah, like what I thought is like just paying the videos and getting the consul consultation for free. And I will open that up for like five at like not more than five people. So if anybody's interested, you could reach out. Share something because that like that came to me like the last days all the time. And I think it's really important um, to whatever we experience to integrate that and not to push that away. I think this one sentence is enough like of what I wanted to say, but if I should like explain it a little bit, is like often like we try to like not experience something or try to control something. Like we talked about that already, but like to integrate that means like, oh, I, I'm, I'm seeing that, I'm accepting that, I'm, I'm feeling that. And like this can make you more whole, like this can make more of like who you are when you're not like hiding one, one, one piece of you. Um, and like, I think integration um, acceptance indifference to like avoidance is like super super powerful tips for me um, I think week to week I, I try to focus on something different um, especially in, in volleyball um, I could give an example like last week I felt from the match it was very chaotic and our first touches were not great and I, I just went in with a focus of this past week to create space for hitters um, off of covering balls or crazy balls just create space for them and it, it it might just seem like a small small focus but in relative it can be so much bigger um and maybe it's a libero thing but I'm always thinking about my other teammates right like I don't score I just keep the ball alive i my biggest part is reception um and so anything that I could do to make the atmosphere and environment better are always things that I'm focusing on and then the other side I love that you said journaling. Um, I love to write also. And I I just did a podcast with a good friend, Key, um, who's doing a really cool thing on YouTube. But we talked a lot. We had a lot of discussion about how much we're just so much bigger than volleyball, right? So of course, this is our job. But at the end of the day, there's so much more to us. So start to focus, you know, on bettering yourself this week, um, what you can do better in life in general whether it's finding a new hobby or reaching out to somebody that you haven't reached out to a while just to have a conversation. I think um, don't forget about all that stuff and it's super, super important. Um, I showed this app to Ryan. Another friend showed it to me and it's basically, once you set it up, it's an app that um, you can basically choose your issues, I, I don't know how else to call them. They're not issues, but some things that you're dealing with, whether it's anxiety, whether it's um, stress, whether you just feel overwhelmed. Um, it has a bunch of different um, options. Um, once you choose what you wanna work on, maybe stress. So for example, you get daily tasks um, to go through for example it leads you through your emotions it um, explains to you what your emotions are how to better understand them um, it pushes you to find ways to deal with them um, so i think it is a really 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 good app for especially during this pandemic like everyone needs this app right now and i would suggest it to everyone so yeah. you know why you're there it's it's your job it's your job and even though people don't, people sometimes make a mistake of not considering it as a job. It is a job. You know, you have, uh, you have your um, working hours, let's say, and uh, you go there and every day you have to try to give your best. Your best in one point will be your 100%. Sometimes it will be your 150%, but sometimes it's going to be 20% out of what you can do, you know? And that's the most important uh, for me, at least now, that's that's where I was not good enough. I could have done that better. When I was at my low point that I wasn't playing well, or because it happens. I mean, you're not a machine. It's 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 normal. You have ups and downs, and that that's quite normal. In those periods, I should have been better to myself. I should have uh, uh, 
lie myself better if I can say so, you know, and I should have been more supportive of myself instead of saying, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to, that's not going to take you anywhere, for sure. And I think that it's just every day coming to the, uh, to the court or to the gym or whatever you are doing and giving your 100%, 105%, 110%, whatever that may be, sometimes it will be enough. Sometimes it won't be enough, but it's, uh, very important that when you give, when you're satisfied with what you did, it's a great thing to tell yourself, well done, tomorrow we do it again. 